we would like to introduce our next speaker. And as Sir Ray mentioned, or Dr. Ray mentioned, our next speaker is the chair of the Professional Regulatory Board of Nursing from August 23, 2017 to November 5, 2020. Under her watch, the PRC awarded the 2019 Most Outstanding Professional Regulatory Board to the Professional Regulatory Board of Nursing. She is an experienced nursing faculty member and administrator. She was elected chair of the LCM 2018 Committee on Leadership and Management Change at Sokotai Tamaytita Open University in Thailand. She was the official Philippine delegate to the 26th, 27th, and 28th Association of Southeast Asian Nations Joint Coordinating Committee in Nursing held in Thailand, Myanmar, and Brunei Darussalam. In 2019, she was the presiding officer of the 29th AJCCN meeting held in Manila. She is a member of the Sigma Theta Tau International Honor Society for Nursing, the Phi Beta Chapter, the Honor Society of Phi Kappa Phi University of the Philippines Chapter, where she was elected for academic excellence, and the Honor Society of Phi Lambda Theta of the University of Santo Tomas graduate school chapter. She received the 2018 Gintong Mina Award in the field of education given on the occasion of the centennial year of the municipality of Teresa Rizal, the 2010 Outstanding Philippine Women's University Alumni Award in the field of service and education, and the Outstanding Doctoral Dissertation for the school year 1997 to 1998 from the University of the Philippines College of Education and the Department of Science, Technology, Science Education Institute. Dr. Arquiza finished her Bachelor of Science in Nursing from Siliman University, her Master of Arts in Nursing from the Philippine Women's University, and her Doctor of Philosophy and Education for the University of the Philippines, Diliman. She presents and consults extensively on nursing curriculum revision, continuing professional development, and outcomes-based education. So without further ado, please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Glenda Arquiza. Good morning, Dr. Arquiza, Dr. Glenda. Good morning, Miko. Thank you for that uh, very generous introduction. Well, Dr. Gapo's presentation is a hard act to follow. So I hope I will live up to the expectations. Anyway, I want to start my discussion with two sentences from uh, one of my all time favorite poems titled Invictus by William Ernest Henley. This is, I am the master of my faith. I am the captain of my soul. Meaning you and you alone is responsible for what you will become later on. So I want to ask you this question and you write it down. What matters most to you right now? To enter into a relationship? Or to pass the nurse licensure examination? Better yet, to tap the nurse licensure examination like Dr. Gapos. And the second question is, how would you achieve what matters most to you? I would like to share with you uh, the experience of Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin is one of the founding fathers of the United States of America, a printer, a scientist, a statesman, a writer. Years ago, in his time, Benjamin Franklin set, set out 
to discover and prioritize his values. So I'm glad uh, Dr. Gapos started uh, his uh, talk with ethics. But anyway, uh, Benjamin Franklin made a plan for attaining moral perfection. So he listed 13 virtues with their precepts and he planned to imitate Jesus and Socrates. So to achieve his intention uh, to acquire the habitude of all these virtues, the 13 virtues, he made a little book in which he allotted a page for each virtue. What are these 13 virtues? One is temperance, silence, order, resolution, frugality, industry, sincerity, justice, moderation, cleanliness, tranquility, chastity, and humility. So as I've said, for each virtue, uh, he allotted one page. For example, uh, one page for the virtue of temperance. What is the precept for the temperance? When you say precept, these are the principle or guide to action of how he will, uh, how he will accomplish or do this, uh, practice this virtue. So his uh, precept for temperance is eat not to dullness, drink not to elevation. Okay. If I were to choose a virtue, I will choose humility because my uh, partner here in this webinar is uh, Dr. Gapos and I saw his humility. Uh, nakita naman ninyo yung achievement ni Dr. Gapos, no? No, in spite of that, he practices humility. So what do you mean by humility? That is freedom from pride or arrogance, no? The quality or state of being humble. So if it were uh, the virtue that I will develop, my precept will be, uh, be humble, I will not boast of my achievement. Okay, that is Dr. Gapos for you. Okay, so inspired by Franklin's uh, little book, a namesake, Franklin Kobe, not, uh, not the other Kobe, huh? Franklin Kobe, the recognized leader in life and time management developed the productivity pyramid model, which uses tool called Franklin Planner. But this is another activity for you. So I will discuss uh, my piece that is assigned to me this morning which is how to cope with issues and concerns in the nurse licensure examination. Okay. Uh, so the issues and concerns that will be presented are clustered into three, namely issues and concerns uh, on the test requirements and procedures, issues and concerns about the NLE subject. And the third one, issues and concerns on the post NLE procedures, passing mark and retake policies. Next slide please. What should I do if I lose, if I lose my notice of admission on my way to the testing center? I'm sorry, Iha, you cannot take the exam because the notice of admission is the required uh, document 
uh, for you uh, to be recognized no? or, or uh, to check whether you are in the list or not. Okay. So the next question is, uh, if I pass the NLE, but I'm not satisfied with my rating, will I be permitted to take it again? Uh, there is no policy regarding this. So uh, why would you take it again? No, because once you pass, uh, you will be, uh, your name will be in the register of professionals, in the registry of the professionals in the record section. Okay. So you just make the best out of the first time that you will take the board examination. Okay, next uh, issue. If I inadvertently tear a part of my answer sheet, will it be invalidated? Most likely it will be. So uh, when this happens, you go to the proctor and if you have time, uh, you change uh, your answer sheet. No? Okay. Issue number four. Can the quality of my shading on my answer sheet affect my score? There are a lot of myths, I think, about this, no, on the way you shade, uh, do the shading. No, I'm not a very techie, so I cannot really uh, give you a good advice. Maybe Dr. Gapos later on can uh, give you an advice to this. No, I really do not know if it is evidence based that if, uh, ano yung tawag doon, pag lumampas, pag lumampas yung, yung ano daw, pag lumampas yung shading, it will be become wrong, or pag uh, uh, parang naglagay ka ng dot. Uh, the OMR will read it. So I really do not uh, know because uh, there are no evidences regarding this or there are no data regarding this. Okay. So number five, will I be allowed to use a calculator during the test? No, you are not allowed. Only in engineering, uh, they are allowed scientific calculator, okay? Next, what are the common errors committed by NLE takers? What advice can you give to prevent such errors? Well, uh, these are the common errors, no? When assigned to set A, it should be consistent for all the five examinations, no? So be very careful. You look at kung anong set ang nabigay sa yo, set A ba or set B, because there will be two sets, no? Set A and set B. Okay. Ah, uh, kung sa first uh, day you are given set A, be sure that in the next four tests you will be given set A also. So be uh, very mindful about the type of the, I mean the category of the test uh, answer that you, or the test question that uh, you were given on the first uh, test examination or the first nursing practice test. Okay, another error is uh, erasure, no? So there should be no erasures on the answer sheet because the uh, OMR or the optical machine reader will invalidate it, okay? Uh, there are marks or phrases uh, that, you, that uh, the examinee put like uh, on the answer sheet, you not know, like all for Jesus, etc. cetera, no? Please avoid, uh, putting any marks or phrases in your answer sheet, it will be invalidated. And another error is not writing the school code or other information. 
Okay. So all information asked of you, be sure that you fill it up correctly. Okay. Okay, next. How many times can I take the NLE if the new nursing bill becomes a law before I become an RN? Okay, uh, you, are, uh, you are still under the RA9173, so you can take it as, uh, as long as 14, 14 takes, no? But uh, in the proposed nursing bill, you will be allowed only three takes, after which you will do a uh, refresher course in a school that will be uh, permitted by the Board of Nursing and uh, probably the DCNE. But it is more of the uh, Board of nursing, I think, uh, who will, that will accredit uh, those schools that can give a refresher course, okay? So as of now, uh, uh, we have some cases wherein they, uh, they took uh, the board exam as much as, as many as 14 times. No, ewan ko naman bakit uh, bakit umabot ng ganoong karami, no? Okay. So I hope all of you will pass, all the 755 of you will pass. Okay? Next. Okay. The next category are issues and concerns about the NLE subject passing mark and we take policy. Okay. What test part is most difficult? Which one is the easiest? Well, it depends on the examinee. I cannot answer you this, but uh, with regards to the analysis that I made, uh, I think I made a five-year analysis and the most difficult uh, and based from the uh, data, uh, I do not know if uh, it is right that we consider it difficult if the test uh, that the test uh, got the lowest mean, because usually the lowest mean is nursing practice five, no? which is uh, care of the client with uh, problems in uh, th that is mental health and psychiatric nursing, uh, neurologic nursing, and musculoskeletal nursing, and test five. And I, in my experience, no, with my six years in the board, with how many, uh, how many tests. No, that will be 12 uh, plus uh, about 18. Uh, probably we have, uh, in my time, we have given 18 tests. No? And there was only one time that uh, ang nursing practice five got the highest mean. Laging yun ang lowest mean. No? Uh, I think. Uh, in my analysis, uh, the uh, community health, community health nursing, and uh, and maternal child nursing got the highest uh, uh, in the last examination. No, uh, it will really depend on the examinees. No, okay, and it will depend on the type of questions that the computer will generate. So this is a hard question uh, to answer, no? which is most difficult, which one is easier. No? But like I noticed also that in nursing practice five, usually those who got a higher scores are from the uh, good schools. No? 
okay? From uh, UST, from Silliman, from UP, no? Uh, there uh, also, there was one time that FEU got the highest in nursing practice uh, five, okay? As I've said, this is mental health and psychiatric nursing. So probably uh, that is the most difficult, okay? Well, uh, it depends on how you were prepared and how, uh, whether you experienced the situation or not, huh? okay? Okay, next. What is the passing score in the NLE? Do I need to get 75 correct answers out of 100 items? Uh, no, it is, uh, what you call this? Uh, that is, what you call this in is statistics? <laughs> but anyway, uh, the passing grade is 75 with the, uh, with no grade uh, less than 60. If you have a grade, one grade of 60 or below 60, uh, you will be on condition and you will take uh, the, the next examination, you will take uh, the nursing practice test that you got a, a, a score below 60, okay? Okay, it's not really like 75 correct answers, no, because we uh, we do the we do a statistical analysis uh, after the uh, all the papers have been corrected. Okay. Okay, we we get the minimum uh, passing uh, level MPL. Okay. If I finish the first day on the exam and get absent on the second day, will I be considered failed? Or if I obtain a passing mark on all subjects on the first day and decide to take just the second day test in the future, will that be allowed? No, it is not. When you do not finish it, then uh, your paper will not be corrected. No, because you did not finish the test, no? So you just have to take it again from the uh, first day to the last, from the first exam to the last exam. Because you, uh, yeah, if you did not finish it, then uh, you did not, you will not be failed or you will not be passed also, okay? So you just have to take it again, okay? Is fundamentals in nursing a separate subject in the actual test? No, it is not. It is threaded through from uh, nursing practice one to nursing practice five. Threaded through meaning all the, it may, uh, it may be in nursing practice one, nursing practice two, but all the, if you are familiar with the 11 key areas of responsibility, uh, like uh, the patient uh, health education, communication, uh, these 11 key areas of responsibility are threaded through in the uh, five subjects. That's why you usually uh, hear that and dami daming research question. Uh, yes. There are at least, or you are sure that there, there will be 25 research questions because for every, the test framework is such that for every uh, practice test, uh, an examiner will give five questions on research, five questions on communications, five questions. Anyway, the 50 items are on the 11 key areas of responsibility, okay? And the other 50 items are on patient care, okay? 
the fundament, fundamental in nursing is threaded through in the four in the five tests. Okay. Okay. What subject in the NLE carries the greatest weight? All the five uh, practice tests uh, have the same weight. Huh? What advice can you give us on what things to focus on for the NLE? I think Dr. Gapus has given you a very good advice on this. No? Okay. Just focus on uh, focus on what you are supposed to do that day, and that is to answer the questions correctly, and to focus on passing the uh, NLE. Just have a mindset of I will, uh, I will pass this. I will pass this. I will pass this. Okay. And uh, as uh, what Dr. Kapus has said, you pray and just trust. No? In our family during this pandemic, we have the mantra, just trust. You know what it means, no? Trust in the higher being than us. Okay? Next. There are social media sites and posts claiming to be a source of questions in the NLE. What can you say about this? No, that is not true. No, source of questions. I know there is somebody saying, oh my, uh, I was talking to uh, the chair of the board of nursing. Uh, my picture would even be posted with him. No? Okay. This is not true, no? Okay. You know, if uh, yung mga leakage, leakage na yan, uh, it's really very hard uh, to do, no? Kasi like the examiner, uh, this is true for all the board examinations. Uh, they are uh, put on uh, on uh, uh, they are in confidential room uh, about two days before the test no okay and uh, nobody no uh, cell phone no our cell phone are left with the guard no and the confidential room is guarded by the uh, by a police, by an um, NBI, and by the uh, house security. So there are at least three security uh, men outside the door. No? Outside the door and inside the confidential room. No? So I do not know, uh, you know, uh, how somebody can get a source of questions. No? So this is not true. No? Okay. I know a school na, but anyway, never mind. <laughs> okay. Okay. Next. Issues and concerns on the post NLE procedures. Okay. Is attendance to a formal oath-taking ceremony a requirement for the filing of license? Yes, it is. Are there any alternative for the formal oath-taking ceremony? Can nurses take their oath from a lawyer or authorized person? No, a lawyer cannot unless uh, he is a government, a government employee, uh, no, a government authority. No? Even a barangay captain uh, can uh, give you the oath taking, could, could administer the oath taking, no? If you want a barangay captain to administer your oath, no? But definitely uh, an oath of office is a requirement before you can be uh, 
license no? before you can be registered. Okay? Okay? Can I take my oath from, uh, from any government official? Yes, you can. As I've said, even a barangay captain, is virtual oath taking valid? Yes, it is. No, because that is the PRC that is doing it. Okay, and most of the uh, oath taking now are virtual. Okay, so as long as it is administered by an authority, then it is valid. Is IB training a prerequisite to local employment of nurses? IB training is not a prerequisite to local employment of nurses, but it may be an institutional policy that uh, what they uh, will get uh, will have uh, an IB training so that uh, they can be assured of the competency of the nurse that they are hiring. Huh? That that is not a prerequisite, no. But uh, as I said, it is institutional. So if uh, they think that, uh, for example, during the pre-screening, pre-employment screening, uh, you do not have the competencies for uh, intravenous therapy, then uh, they have the right not to hire you. Okay. Is continuing education required for license renewal? You are not renewing your license. You will have a license uh, for your lifetime na yun. No, you will be given yung parang diploma, no? Wherein it contains the license number. What you are renewing is the identification card, uh, which is a an uh, evidence of your competency no okay so continuing education is is still a prerequisite uh, for id renewal uh, as of now you are required 15 cpd units okay Next, what are some regulations that will have an impact on our opportunities as nurses? Maybe the deployment ban. No? There is a deployment ban uh, for nurses as of now. It was lifted for a while, but uh, they put it on again. Okay. What are the implications of the ASEAN integration to us nurses? Okay, the ultimate aim of the age of the ASEAN is to have a, uh, at least for the association or the ASEAN joint, uh, AG, ASEAN joint committee, coordinating committee on nurses. The ultimate aim, and this is true for architecture and engineering, is to have an ASEAN nursing registry. No, we're in. Uh, if you are a level level six professional here, uh, when you go to Singapore, uh, you will be uh, considered also a level six. Uh, professional no so whatever they are benefits they are giving for a level six professional in singapore uh you should get it no okay so that is the beauty of the asean integration no okay although uh it is uh moving very slow no Okay, until now we are at the, at the AGCCN are working on the 
harmonization of the uh, nursing curricula. No? Because like, for example, in Indonesia, they still have the licensed practical nurse. They still have the associate degree nurse. Now they have a ladderized uh, curriculum also in uh, Brunei, Jerusalem. No? It is only the Philippines uh, all over the world that have one preparation for uh, the nursing profession, and that is Bachelor of Science in Nursing. No? Only the Philippines. The rest, they have ladderized uh, curriculum. Like, for example, in, uh, in the United States, they have LPN or LBN, then they have the associate degree, and then uh, the baccalaureate degree. Okay? So, thank you. Good luck and God bless all of you. Okay? So, I hope all of you will have will be in the virtual or taking okay i can uh, entertain other questions from the audience except what will be in the board exam i cannot <laughs> answer you that yes thank you thank you very much dr artiza for of course enlightening our participants this morning regarding the issues and concerns uh, surrounding the nursing licensure exam. So hopefully they were able to get some tips and of course, uh, very ano, motherly advice ang binibigay sa atin ni Dr. Artiza. So gusto niya lahat kayo, lahat ng ating participants this morning ay makapasa ng nursing licensure exam nila. May it be this coming July or next month yeah, July, or maybe November? July 2 to 3. July 2 to, 2 to 3. Yes, 2 to 3. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's correct. So uh, by with, the way, I by the way, uh, by uh, next year, no, by June 2022, the test framework will be different already, no. Uh, mm -hmm. But although there will be a transition period, wherein those who graduated under CMO number 14, uh, they can still have the same test framework. The test framework as of now uh, is the 11 key areas of responsibility no? or the four categories of uh, competencies, no? patient care competencies, empowering competencies, enabling competencies, enhancing competencies. Iyon pa rin ang, uh, ang uh, test framework probably uh, two years after uh, Siguro hanggang 20, uh, baka mga hanggang 2024, uh, there may be, maybe, huh? uh, I have recommended this to the new board, maybe there will be uh, two sets of questions for CMO number 14 and for CMO number 15. Kasi iba na ang test framework for uh, the June 2022 NLE. Ang test framework now will be the 14 uh, program outcomes of CMO number 15. No? Okay. So dapat yung mga re 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 review center, they have uh, aligned na their lessons with CMO number 15 or with the 14 program outcomes. All right. So, uh, may added pa, may pa-bonus pa si Dr. Arquiza sa atin na insight regarding sa future ng nursing licensure exam. So, as mentioned, we will be um, siguro entertaining a few questions from our yeah. Q&A chat box uh, since, of course, uh, we have to uh, manage our time. And no worries. If you have other questions, uh, one of the administrators of our EGAPUS review system uh, put out their link sa ating chat or the uh, type their link or kung saan kayo pwedeng mag uh, mag-ask ng mga questions and of course Dr. Ray and her and his team will be more than willing to answer them as well all right sige so thank you 
thank you sir Miko ah uh, uh, linawin ko lang yung kay ma'am kanina yung shading oo sabi yeah. niya uh-oh. sige po uh, gumawa yeah. ako ng experiment diyan because uh-huh. we also use a scanner that has uh, okay. almost the same brand at saka yung paper uh-huh. na ginagamit namin for uh, drills ganun din yung uh-huh. uh, ginagamit sa actual exam uh, ah yeah. baka tayo ma-accuse naman ni Nira no gumamit kami ma'am na iba't ibang brand ng pencil Merong isang brand ng pencil hindi ko pwedeng sabihin dito baka tayo maakusahan. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Na pag yun uh-huh. ang ginamit mo hindi po siya na-read ma'am nung ano scanner. OMR. Zero uh-huh. po ang lumalabas. So, uh-huh. uh, meron din kaming ginawa like for example, magsi-shade ka ng isang letter tapos gagamitin mo yung fingernails mo na diinan yung ibang letters, zero din ang lumalabas. Zero din. Oo, so, zero din. Magamit talaga. Oo, ma- meron Uh-oh. talaga siya. So, yun namang uh, iba-ibang shape ang gagamitin. Yeah. Kunwari, eh, rectangular, eh, may gumawa ng pabilog, may nag-check lang. Ma'am, ano din, hindi rin niya nababasa hindi yung nababasa. ibang shape. So, yeah. I think the keyword, ma'am, na ma-advise natin sa ating mga uh, RNs to be consistency po ng shading. Yeah. So, ang lagi kong sinasabi, it doesn't hurt if you count like when you make strokes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then the next one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The next one, 1, 2. Para sure siya na yung number of strokes walang naiiwan na lighter. Kasi ang uh-huh. tendency, ma'am, pag may naiwan na lighter, hindi niya nare-read doon uh-huh. sa ginawa naming uh, uh, experiment. So, ang advice ko sa mga RNs to be, huwag niyong antayin na tapusin niyo muna yung 100 bago ka mag-shade. Pag nawalan kayo ng oras, dangerous. So, what I advise is per situation sila mag-shade. So, kunwari, situation number one would be questions one to five. Pag sagot na nila, i-transfer na kagad nila sa kanilang answer sheet. May nagtanong dito kanina, sweaty daw yung kanyang hands. Will it affect daw yung uh, kanyang answer sheet? Definitely. Kasi nag-experiment din kami dun, ma'am, yung nabasa, natalsikan ng laway. <laughs> Nagkakaroon, ma'am, siya ng, ano, ng inaccurate na reading. Inaccurate. Uh-huh. Meron pang nangyari dati, isang estudyante, uh, Christmas season niyata nag-exam or November, nahulog yung Christmas decor doon, <laughs> doon sa answer sheet niya. Kaya tamang-tama mo yung sinabi niyo na papano pag may napunit or na-damage, they yeah. have to go to the proctor. That's a very, very uh, clever way of dealing with the situation. Kasi Kasi minsan yung mga estudyante hindi talaga nalalaman yan. Yun naman nagtanong yeah. kung, kung nawala niya yung kanyang notice of admission, anong gagawin niya. Because somebody, maybe a jealous classmate uh, who is very competitive, meron kasi estudyante dyan, ninakaw yung kanyang ano, uh, notice of admission <laughs> the night before ng kanyang best friend mismo na comp- competitor niya siguro sa top 10 or whatever. So the best is talagang ha- hold on. <laughs> Sabi nga ni Ma'am, you can yeah, hold on. Hold on. Siguro kung pwede mo ilagay on, like you're holding on your life. <laughs> ilalim ng unan mo 'yan <laughs> bago ka matulog or yeah. yakapin mo na. Oo, kasi nagkaroon talaga ng mga yeah. Pero what what you could be a, what could be a consolation is pag gano'n na nangyari sa look at it as directional. Maybe uh, God is leading you to a more appropriate time when you can best appreciate yung kanyang rewards na ibibigay kaya nangyari yun. I mean, oh, yeah. wag, wag lang masyadong dibdiben because things like that happen. Makontrol man natin sarili natin yung sa paligid natin, hindi talaga natin kontrolado. Mm-hmm. And then, yung, yung yeah. mga gustong malaman, baka magkamali po ma'am kasi nung gamiting lapis, you can email me, I'll tell you the brand, yung hindi nare-read ng OMR. Uh, I would be more than willing to t- tell it to you doon. Pero yung mga, yung uh, mongkol naman, yung mongkol naman, eh maganda yung resulta. Yung isa pa, oo, yung may, may isa pa na kulay dilaw din, ang pangalan yata, is, is not mongkol eh. Um, something else. Pero yung mga, yung mga ganong ano, maganda. But there's really one brand na hindi talaga mam mabasa kahit na basain mo pa ng from yung secretion natin. Di ba minsan para oh, uh, hindi talaga mam hindi nababasa ng OMR. Uh, yeah. Talaga. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sir Ray, for those insights. Oo, kasi marami actually dito sa ating uh, Q&A na nagtatanong regarding sa shading and everything. So thank mm. you very much for addressing yun. Siguro po ay ay uh, nag-pick out ako ng mga questions na baka po pwedeng uh, ma-enlighten pa ang ating mga participants, especially with uh, health 
uh, safety protocols. Uh, meron po dito mga question, kailangan po ba vaccinated na para makapag-take? And ano po daw ang health protocols natin, health safety protocols in taking the exam po? Uh, Dr. Arkiza. Uh, I'm sorry, no, I'm not very familiar with the new... Uh, uh, there is a... Uh, a new agreement between PRC and DOH, no? But I'm not uh, privy to that anymore, no? Because I'm out of the board, no? But uh, maybe you can uh, look at it, no? Nandiyan naman sa advisory ng DOH or, or ng PRC, no? Mm -hmm. uh -oh. Ayan. Like yung uh, uh, like Parang iyong gaya nung face-to-face, -face, uh, ano, uh, limited face-to-face -face classes. Parang ganoon ang, ang health protocol. But I'm not uh, very sure with the, uh, with, with the board exam. Uh, I know that there will be a limited, uh, limited number, no? When it used to be uh, 20, uh, 20 people in a classroom, I think it will be limited. No? And I think it will depend on the level of uh, quarantine. No? Mm -hmm. Kung ECQ, kung GCQ. So I think uh, baka ang regional, uh, regional offices will have its own uh, proto health protocols no? depending on the uh, level of quarantine. No? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sige. thank you for uh, uh, Dr. So maybe you can look at it no? sa, oh. sa PRC website. PRC website, yes. It's best to check yung PRC uh -huh. website and of course uh, mga local uh, areas nyo kung ano yung mga health and yes. safety. local local areas. Yes, Yun pa rin kasi yung right. pinafollow talaga. Yeah, based from what uh -oh. I saw yeah. right now dun sa PRC website. So ayun, you can check it out yeah. sa PRC uh -oh. website um, yes. uh, to all our participants. So, at, saka, okay. at saka Sir Miko, kasi I don't think it's clever now to give them uh, the list kasi it depends really on the level yeah. of uh, community quarantine and eventually quarantine. It the location. So what might be yeah. true now may not necessarily be true in a week or two. So yeah. I think the most appropriate thing to do with regard to concerns related to protocols and RT-PCR tests would be to check on the latest advice of DOH and PRC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's okay. right. Uh -uh. That's, uh, thank you very much, sir, uh, Dr. E. But wait, there's more. You are all thank invited you. to the second part of our NLT Masterclass. Dun sa mga hindi naka today, Doon sa mga gusto pang mag-attend sa second part natin, we will be having it on June 26, 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Again, this is a free webinar via Zoom and we will be having Doc Arkiza and Dr. Ray with us again during the second part of our NLE Masterclass. And of course, I would like to leave everyone okay, to end this morning's event with um, a saying, di ba? may kasabihan. Famous kasabihan to ng mga Pilipino to inspire and to motivate everyone who is here right now. So ika nga sa kasabihan, sa hinabahaba ng posisyon, sa simbahan din ang tuloy. Din ang tuloy. <laughs> Haba ng inyong hinintay para makapag-take kayo ng nursing licensure exam nyo. So para sa inyo, sa hinabahaba ng inyong paghihintay, pagpuporsigi, paghahanda para sa nursing licensure exam, sa dulo ng lahat, magiging RN din kayo. Thank you very much to all our participants, of course, to our guest speakers for this event. And we wish you all the best in your nursing licensure exam. Thank you very much, all participants and future RNs. Have a great day ahead. And of course, on behalf of Health Care, so Philippines, we welcome you, the whole team, marketing and recruitment of Health Carousel. So thank you and have a great day ahead.